I'm Helen Byrne. I'm a professor of computational biology based at the Mathematical Institute. Just looking at a very simple PDE model. I use mathematical techniques to try to gain insight into a range of different biological and medical systems, from wound healing, kidney morphogenesis, tissue engineering, but my main focus is really on studying different aspects of solid tumour growth. Over the 20 years that I've been studying tumour growth, I've noticed a big change in perception and understanding of what cancer is. Cancer is such a complex disease that you can't understand it by sort of linear thinking. Um, if A affects B, B affects C. There's this increasing recognition that the tumour isn't just about mutant cells, but that it's recruiting normal cells from the surrounding environment, and they're actually contributing to the tumour's growth. And that's what makes it so much more of a complex disease, that we need to target not only the tumour cells, but we need to normalise the behaviour of already normal cells that have been led astray, if you like, by the tumour. Pharmaceutical industries, I think, are recognising that mathematical modelling has a key role to play in drug development. It's so expensive to get a drug to market. So many compounds fall along the way. If we can use our mathematical models to try and predict earlier when a compound is or isn't going to succeed, then hopefully that can have quite a profound economic impact and hopefully ultimately get promising drugs to clinic much quicker. One of the projects that I'm particularly interested in at the moment is looking at vascular genesis, describing how vascular networks form very much during early embryonic development. And many of the processes that are occurring there are going to be mirrored in what we see in vascular tumours. The model that we're building is you can Im imagine the vascular network as a series of interconnected cells or beads connected to each other, say, by springs. Each individual cell is then going to be subject to mechanical forces and also responding to biochemical signals that it's receiving from the surrounding tissue matrix. One of the things that we're particularly interested in doing with this model, as we vary the sensitivity of the cells to the signals and forces that they're experiencing, how does that change the network that forms? Can we identify parameter values that give us networks that look like healthy tissue? As we change parameters, how can we arrive at more irregular networks that are much more characteristic of the sorts of vascular networks that we associate with tumours? Once we can understand those differences, it gives us a handle on what processes are being dysregulated between the normal cells and the tumour environment. It gives us directions for how we can make the tumour vasculature more normal. Hopefully it gives us a way of delivering chemotherapeutic drugs more successfully to the tumour environment. The models that we develop are very often quite original and interesting mathematical objects that merit investigation and that raise quite challenging technical questions. We all know somebody who's had cancer. Every person, I think, is touched by it in some way, shape or form. If we can do anything to help to improve treatment, then that gives me immense job satisfaction.